Mercedes have one good race, and Red Bull immediately demands that they be investigated. The Silver Arrows took everyone by surprise at the Canadian Grand Prix. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best on the grid in one of the more thrilling races this season. The spotlight may have been on Max Verstappen by the end of the race, but the powerhouse from Milton Keynes isn't invincible anymore. Because of this, Red Bull has unofficially called on the FIA to scrutinise the legality of Mercedes' front wing. The upgrade made its debut on George Russell's car in Monaco and was added to Lewis Hamilton's car in Canada. These enhancements have paid off handsomely for Mercedes, with Russell clinching pole position and a podium finish in Canada. Red Bull was taken aback by this sudden burst of speed from the Silver Arrows, and now the engineering team in Milton Keynes, led by Paul Monaghan, is working overtime to study Toto Wolff's new upgrades. Their main focus is not on their car, but on the flexing of the W15's front wing and nose. James Allison is singing praises about Mercedes' new front wing update, calling it a crucial step for the team's 2024 ambitions. The Mercedes technical director sees it as a game changer. But the technical battle between Red Bull and Mercedes is heating up. Just last week, there was a heated exchange between James Allison and Christian Horner over Red Bull's latest updates. Red Bull's days of dominance are now numbered as McLaren and Ferrari gain ground on them. Does that mean that Red Bull hasn't improved since last year? Well, not exactly. It's just a tale of two cities at Red Bull. While Max Verstappen clinched another thrilling win in Canada, Sergio Perez was left in the dust, far from the points. Adding salt to the wound, Perez is now facing a three-place grid penalty for the next race, with Red Bull having to pay a €25,000 fine. Helmut Marco finds it strange that Lewis Hamilton wasn't penalised when he finished the final lap of the 2020 British Grand Prix on three wheels while Sergio Perez faced penalties in Canada. For those who might not remember, Hamilton suffered a puncture on the final lap at Silverstone, his front left tyre shredding rubber as he miraculously crossed the finish line to secure victory ahead of Max Verstappen. Marco's comments highlight the perceived inconsistencies in race penalties. After his win at the 2020 British Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton was instructed by Mercedes to stop immediately with his race engineer emphasising that continuing was dangerous. Helmut Marko now finds it strange that Hamilton wasn't penalised for this incident, while Sergio Perez received a penalty for a similar situation in Canada. Marko is calling the FIA out on the inconsistency in race regulations and penalties. He wrote the following in his Speed Week column. Three places back for Perez on the Spanish grid because he brought his damaged car into the pits instead of putting it aside in Montreal. I think that's too harsh a punishment because in a race with changeover conditions, you have to bring your car back, especially when it's not immediately clear what the damage looks like. Perez's rear view mirrors were dirty and he couldn't see what the rear looked like. We, on the other hand, could see from the data that the suspension was OK. Of course, we try to bring the car back and, ideally, be able to fight for points again. The race stewards then announced that parts of his car had fallen off. But hey there, I remember Lewis Hamilton once crossing the finish line on three wheels at Silverstone and winning. Strange there was no penalty then. Verstappen clinched the victory at the Grand Prix, marking his sixth win of the season and widening his lead in the driver's standings to an impressive 56 points. Victory in Montreal, thanks to the Verstappen factor, as I like to call it, said Marco. Once again, Max Verstappen's very special qualities were the deciding factor in him winning a race that most other drivers probably wouldn't have won. Sergio Perez, who hasn't scored any points in the last two races, is counting on Max Verstappen to bounce back and get back up there. Verstappen recognises the importance of his teammates' performance in helping him secure points crucial for the championship battle. I think the damage was done yesterday, of course, for Checo, he said. Starting in the back, it's very hard in these conditions. Then, of course, I saw him retire with the damage, so I knew that I had to score big, of course, to not let the other teams catch up a lot. But I do think at the end of the day, as long as you keep winning, so you score 25 points, even if the others finish P2, P3, you don't really lose out too much. And then you kind of can afford sometimes these one-offs. 
But of course, naturally, we always want the two cars to be up there. And I also have no doubt that that will change very soon again. We just need to work on our car, to be honest, to make it a bit easier to drive also, probably, to feel a bit more comfortable. And then I'm sure that we have both cars back up there, like we had in the beginning of the season. Franz Verschur's perspective is very different. He finds it incomprehensible that Red Bull renewed Sergio Perez's contract for two more years. He's even suggesting that the team should consider getting rid of Perez and promoting Yuki Tsunoda. It's a strong stance against Perez's performance and the team's decision-making. Helmut Marko poured cold water on the hopes of Yuki Tsunoda, Daniel Ricciardo and Carlos Sainz, emphasising the importance of continuity when they decided to renew Sergio Perez's contract. He further commented, Checo delivers. He has his ups and downs, but he is still a fast driver. Franz Verschur, who achieved success at the 24 Hours of Le Mans with Jos Verstappen, is among those puzzled by Red Bull's decision. He believes that Yuki Tsunoda, who is already confirmed as an RB driver for 2025, would perform better. Verschur expressed these thoughts during an interview with Ziggo Sport Race Café. He causes so much damage, he doesn't even generate that much. He doesn't get any points for the Constructors' Championship, so that is also a tragedy. Max has to do it alone. Put Yuki in and switch the two. I don't understand it. Verschur also says that Jos Verstappen isn't concerned about who occupies the second car next to his son, Max. Instead, Jos has bigger worries about Red Bull following their off-track drama. This drama unfolded when team boss Christian Horner faced an investigation by Red Bull's parent company over allegations of inappropriate behaviour. Although the allegations were dismissed, Jos Verstappen publicly called for Horner to step down before the resolution. Jos doesn't say anything about it either. They don't give a damn about who's wrong, Verschur said. Jos doesn't think that's very important. He does have the resources around him and he is already afraid of the unrest in the team. Maybe they did this to get that piece back into the team by putting Perez in, but I don't think it's a good story. Get rid of that guy. And it's not just him who has been clamouring for Perez's sacking. Juan Pablo Montoya reflects on Mercedes' dominant era in Formula One, acknowledging that they provided the competition fans desired by not favouring a number one or number two driver. Montoya compares this to Red Bull's current situation, where Max Verstappen is clearly the number one driver over Sergio Perez. It's the same as when Lewis Hamilton won every race, although he still had a competitive teammate, the former McLaren driver told Formula One, NL. Mercedes consciously chose to be competitive with both cars. Red Bull clearly has a different strategy. As a team, I can imagine that it provides peace internally on a sporting level, but from a fan perspective, you most likely prefer Mercedes' approach. At least then, you still had battle and drama on the track between the two Mercedes. This way, it is much more difficult and challenging to successfully run a team. Pressed about the perceived hierarchy at Red Bull, with Max Verstappen being favoured as the main driver, Montoya replied, Exactly. At Mercedes, there was not a number one car and a number two car. They always managed to make both cars competitive. And the best proof is Nico Rosberg, who even became world champion alongside Lewis. And Valtteri Bottas has also won many races. Essentially, what we want is competition. An intense battle for the title. What do you think? Are you on board with Red Bull renewing Sergio Perez's contract? Or do you agree that there are better options out there? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell for the hottest F1 news.